So, it's the only time in my life that I have been in the presence of a great man. Uh, why is he a great man? I don't know how many people on the planet are alive today because he did what he did. And he did what he did without anybody around him necessarily to guide him. And I think we should give him a round of applause for showing up. everybody of something called the Chatham House Rules, which I actually looked up, and many of you may not know what the, I'm going to actually read it. All participants are understood to have agreed that it would be conducive to free discussion, that they should be subject to the rule for the relevant part of the meeting, and the rule is that when a meeting is held under Chatham House Rules, participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speakers, nor of any other participant, may be revealed. So... That's, that's the way we're going to operate here. And I will take, I have uh, just, I'm going to talk quickly about South Africa then, or ask FW quickly about South Africa then, quickly about uh, South Africa today, uh, talk about uh, the Global Leadership Foundation, and then we'll open it up and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. But I want to take you back to 1986, 87, and so where I was at the time was a student at Oxford. I was arguing for the continuation of apartheid. The world will fall apart if apartheid ends. We're defending the world from communism. These people are, the ANC are terrorists. I believed this very strongly, and I was an educated guy. Now, how did you do what you did? How did you move, yourself, how did you move forward uh, with, well, let's, very specifically, I'm a member of the South African Police Force. FW cannot do that. Let me start out by saying thank you very much for the warm welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to be part of my wife is Greek and she gave me a quick uh, linguistic lesson that orasis means vision. <laughs> and I'm amongst people who are looking at the future here. Really. So I don't think we must spend too much time on the past tonight. <laughs> but, let, but, but, let me, but let me say... It's not for the past, it's so how I act and how we act now in similar circumstances. Let me say, we were, who were in the National Party started out, we talked about my a uh, discussion with uh, uh, Amanpour started out when we were young idealistic people by saying to ourselves we need to bring justice to everybody in South Africa but in my young days <coughs> I believe that through the nation state concept through the creation not artificially because people were they, they, we have 11 official languages in South Africa recognized in our new constitution. Why 11? Because there are 11 distinguishable linguistic groups, each with their own cultures, each with their own histories. So that is what we believed when we were young. But in the late 70s, we realized that this ideal could not be realized and that the system we were managing was continuing injustice where a minority had most of the power in the country and where actually they were suppressing a majority of the people. And we said to ourselves, as early as the early 80s, this is not morally justifiable. We need to change it. So, I did not have a Damascus Road experience where I believed in separate development, in the philosophy of separateness, of division as a solution. And suddenly I woke up and said, no, the solution lies in unity, in bringing everybody together in one united South Africa. 